Good morning and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. So as some of you may be aware, I released a video a while ago uh, trying to debunk or just make people aware of the clickbaiting that goes on, people just trying to draw the attention of SpaceX fans, Elon Musk fans, by spewing completely false or distorted stories. But one of these things was, one of these stories rather, was about some sort of terrifying discovery that was made on Mars and how it could impact Elon Musk's plans to colonize the planet. However, after spending some time examining some recent stories about Mars, there is in fact a discovery that could have a significant impact on his future plans, and it could be positive or it could be negative. And this discovery comes in the uh, in the field of volcanism and geology. Some of you may have heard about this for the longest time, decades and decades planetologists and just about every scientist, the entire scientific community, had concluded that Mars was a dead planet, that its core was no longer active, that it didn't have any sort of uh, magma or molten rock beneath its surface like our planet does, that it was a geologically dead planet and had been for billions of years. But recently, as a result of the surveys and studies undertaken by the InSight lander, we've discovered that that is definitely not the case, and it could have an impact on future colonization ambitions. So it could help them, or it could hurt them. And we're going to find out all the details on this new discovery in just a moment. But first, real quick, just going to bring you guys up to date. If you're not interested in hearing about this, skip to this point. It's only going to be about a minute or so. But having stayed in this country for over 100 days, it's been extremely taxing. You guys have come to my assistance many times in the past. Once again, I want to emphasize if this is not an easy thing for you to do, then please don't do it. But I do need to get home, and I just went in debt to my ex-wife to the tune of about $800. That was an awkward situation, to say the least. I'd love to be able to get myself out of this, but it's not your responsibility to do it. Nevertheless, if it's something that you would like to help out, with. My PayPal link is in the description. Let's move on to what's going on on Mars. So yeah, things have gotten very strange on Mars and very exciting. As they say, for many decades, you know, the scientific community had come to the undisputed conclusion, really, that Mars was dead. And now InSight has proven that that is absolutely not true. So how serious is the situation? Could there be a significant volcanic eruption in the future? And if that is the case, how could this actually help colonization? In 1971, after waiting out a six-month dust storm, Mariner 9 finally was able to provide us with some of the first detailed images of the Martian surface. And we suddenly came to the realization that this had once been a very geologically active planet. The only surface features that could be observed at first were the tops of enormous volcanoes protruding out over the dust storm. These volcanoes were titanic on a level that we really didn't even think possible at the time. Olympus Mons continues to be one of the greatest wonders of the solar system. It sits on a plateau that is as high as Everest. Just this little escarpment that it's sitting on is actually as big as Mount Everest, and the mountain itself is 25 kilometers high and 600 125 kilometers in diameter, the size of Arizona.
Arizona and triple the height of Everest, even if you compare it to Mauna Loa, including the part of the volcano that's underwater. Mauna Loa is only 10 kilometers in height and 120 kilometers in diameter. It is absolutely titanic, and the total volume is a hundred times larger than that of Mauna Loa. As a matter of fact, if you took the entire chain of the Hawaiian Islands, it would fit inside Olympus Mons. The reason these volcanoes became so colossal in Mars' ancient past is because of the lack of a continental drift. Instead, when lava plumes emerge from Mars's core, they tend to stay put and slowly build up a bigger and bigger shield volcano. So these are volcanoes very similar to the ones that we see in Hawaii, except of course that you don't have continental drift cutting off the supply of lava over time. Instead, the volcano just simply keeps getting larger and larger until the lava plume gives out. And we haven't seen any evidence of any geological activity in this region for billions of years, so it stood to reason that Mars was a dead planet, but this is not the case at all. Six days ago, a paper was published that put everything we thought we knew about Mars geology and volcanism on its head. Now, after analyzing data from several orbital probes and also dozens of Mars quakes captured by the InSight probe, we now have conclusive proof that the subsoil of the Elysium Planitia, which is one of the largest Martian plains, contains an area displaying volcanic activity, current volcanic activity, spanning a diameter of about 4,000 kilometers, or an area about the size of Western Europe. The study also describes how Mars has become the third planet in the interior of the solar system with known active volcanism. Amazing how little we still know about the solar system in spite of decades of study. The plume is 100 to 300 degrees Celsius hotter than the rest of the planet, so despite it being in a solid state, it flows slowly upward. The head of this plume is thought to be between 25 and 200 kilometers deep, but were it to reach a distance of about 10 kilometers from the surface, the plume could heat the crust to a melting point causing a lava eruption. And according to the authors of the study, the high seismic activity captured by InSight indicates that this area is active, and there may already be lava deposits in the subsurface. According to one of the study's authors, quote, in other work by our group, we have found the most recent instant of volcanism in the history of Mars, a small ash deposit about 20 kilometers in diameter, right in the center of the mantle plume. It is about 50,000 years old, which is to say yesterday in geological terms. All of this tells us that the region is active today day. And this isn't the first time the region has been active. Elysium Mons, right in the middle of this region, is one of the largest volcanoes on Mars, even though it's a long ways away from Olympus Mons. It's 12.6 kilometers above its base and 14.1 kilometers above what we call the Martian Datum or the Martian sea level. No matter how you measure it, it's substantially taller than Mount Everest. Its diameter is about 240 kilometers kilometers, and it has a summit caldera about 14 kilometers across, and it is flanked by two smaller volcanoes, Hecate Tholis to the northeast and Albertholis to the southeast. So this has been a very active area in the past, and it has built colossal volcanoes. And could this happen again? And here's another big question. Why is this happening now? Because all of the other volcanism on the planet, at least as far as we can tell, has been quiet for billions of years. And indeed, even in this area, it was quiet for a long stretch of time until relatively recently. We're talking the last few million years, of course, but that is a tick on the geological clock. Now, the pressure of this plume has caused a bulging shape in the entire region that rises from the surrounding terrain by one to two kilometers and it has also created a huge network of cracks and faults known as the Cerberus Trench, which is the longest of its kind on the planet at about 1,300 kilometers long. 
Now this mantle plume is much larger than any that has ever existed on Earth, and here's the question. If this does turn into a period of active volcanism, as strange as that may be given the amount of time that's passed since Mars was last active in terms of volcanoes actually exploding on its surface, what could that mean for our colonization plans? Well, at the very least, if we're planning to establish colonies inside lava tubes, even if those lava tubes are located in other parts of the planet, that could be problematic because we really don't know how bad the earthquakes are going to be on Mars and how that might impact a lava tube or other subterranean habitats. And on top of that, if there is an active eruption going on on the Martian surface, it could create a hazard far more significant than the hazard created by shield volcanoes on Earth. Let me explain. What you're looking at right now are lava bombs bombarding the caldera of a volcano in Iceland. As you can see, there's some tourists who are definitely in harm's way there. Lava bombs can be hurled as far as 5 to 10 kilometers away from a shield volcano while it's erupting. However, on Mars, it could be far, far worse because of the low gravity. Lava bombs can reach a velocity of 600 kilometers per hour, and given the low atmosphere, atmospheric resistance and one-third gravity on Mars, these things could be hurled far further away from a volcanic eruption than what we have observed on Earth. Once again, this is all supposition, but it's definitely something that could happen. Now, something that would be far more lethal as far as volcanic eruptions are concerned and their consequences are earthquakes and landslides. Landslides on Mars are far more problematic than they are on Earth. Again, because of low gravity, atmospheric resistance, and also because of the nature of the Martian regolith. A Martian landslide and the debris created by one can travel at velocities that beggar belief. We're talking anywhere from 77 meters per second to 345 meters per second, or faster than the speed of sound. This is a very, very serious threat that needs to be taken into consideration if we establish colonies anywhere in the Valles Marineris where these landslides can get up to serious velocities cascading down enormous canyon walls or even in deep craters. But if we decide to establish our colonies on high ground, then the radiation gets worse. So yeah, Volcanism could be very problematic to our colonization efforts, even if there is no volcanic eruption. However, on the other side of the equation, they could be very helpful. The most important natural resource on Mars is water ice. However, if the water ice is already melted or heated up to a considerable degree by a subsurface lava plume, it would be a lot easier to make use of it, to extract it, to melt it. It would just just make the whole process a lot easier. On top of that, geothermal energy could make colonizing Mars a whole lot easier as well. We wouldn't need solar panels. We wouldn't need nuclear reactors. So this is something that we could exploit in the same way that the people of Iceland exploit geothermal hot springs for power sources, heating our habitats, and many, many other applications. Hell, you might even be able to make the area into a tourist attraction in the same way that Iceland and other regions have geothermal hot springs with unique mineral compositions in the water providing supposed healing powers and all sorts of other things, there might be a way to market all of this. There could be as much money to be made in this region as there could be risk and danger. But like Iceland, with every positive development, with every positive characteristic of volcanic activity, there's also some serious dangers. And you can ask anybody who actually lives in this country about their experiences with all of that, and they will tell you in no uncertain terms that visiting Iceland is very, very different from living there. And if we're talking about a planet that has active volcanism along with virtually no atmosphere, ridiculously cold temperatures, and lots of radiation, that could become very problematic indeed. But still, if we exploit 
this new discovery in the right way, it could make colonizing Mars for Elon Musk and others a lot more feasible. We are less than 9,500 subscribers away from 100k, and keep in mind for the 100k challenge and that tattoo thing, I need to be at 100,000 subscribers. So once again, you guys know who you are. Subscribe! And also, please check the description for various ways to support my content. Please like this video as well, and as always, stay angry about space!